Welcome back to Forum 13. I'm Phil Bailey. You may be having a cup of coffee and breakfast while you watch us this morning. You know, we took a path to get to where you are today. Uh, uh, what we eat uh, evolved, and it didn't just happen overnight. We're joined by Jason Cryon, who is with the New York State Museum, and David Britton, a Food Network chef who is from Saratoga Springs. Thank you. You guys chose sort of uh, the uh, anniversary of the birthday of Charles Darwin, That's correct. father of evolution, to talk about the evolution of uh, uh, cooking That's right. and eating, and there is a whole program coming up at the New York State Museum. That's correct. This is the third year we've done this. This is a, a program uh, that we put together to, to marry uh, science and cooking and, and the interest in both of those uh, categories, and uh, uh, it's really in, in commemoration of Darwin's birthday uh, in a new way that we can engage the public and, and uh, uh, talk about science and, and in a way it's really exciting. David, you're getting started on pizza? Well, pizza, flatbread, this represents the yeast seminar we're going to do. So uh, the components we have here today are yeast, potato, and pork. Those will be the three topics that we're going to be discussing at the museum this year. And, uh, all right, does yeast go back how far? I mean, the cavemen, I assume, didn't have George Foreman grills, so I would have starved to death. Uh, but it, it, did they develop yeast? I mean, is that from the get-go? Certainly meat. If you could kill it, you could eat it. Right. Well, there are thousands of, of naturally occurring yeast species, but only a few have been ever domesticated for human consumption. So one of them, the most important one, is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and that's what uh, Chef David here is, is going to be using to leaven the dough and, and make that rise. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So for <laughs> Yeah, for remember. Remember. Very good. Okay. Now, the, the interesting thing about this yeast uh, species is that the, the byproducts of the meta metabolism are CO2, which is a gas that's used to leaven the, the bread, and, and alcohol, ethanol. Uh, and ethanol is one of the only alcohols that humans can consume. So we're going to, uh, during the yeast program, which is on uh, February 16th, Wednesday, uh, we'll be talking about uh, all the lovely things that one can do with this great yeast species. All right. Uh, the food we eat, I assume, has evolved. It must have been a very narrow menu to begin with when True. we were walking around in bare feet and had spears. True. True. Uh, and then through one of the big stories that we, we talk about through this program is the whole idea of, of artificial selection, how humans have used naturally occurring food products and, and uh, uh, evolved uh, with them to uh, to increase our food production and our, our nutrition. So uh, the, the yeast, certainly the potatoes that we'll be talking about on the uh, February 9th program, and certainly the pork that we'll be talking about on the February 2nd program. Okay, what about the evolution of pizza? <laughs> the evolution, well, again, we're representing, if you can smell this, we made this as a, as a biga, or a sourdough starter, which is the yeast feeding on the sugar. If you want to mm -hmm. smell that, you can see when you smell. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Usually this wouldn't be polite. <laughs> you know, to generally to come smell this. So. Yeah. You know, By the way, smelling I, people's food. Every morning we get up, we check out your tie. All right, how am I doing today? It's it's a fabulous tie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> but no, now really, how far back does pizza go? Uh, pizza be, uh, starting in uh, uh, historically Naples. You know, hmm. they are the really the, the, the godfather. Of the, of the whole uh, pizza movement, yeah, you know, so I could refer this as pizza. They say never trust a round pizza, you know. So this could be a flatbread. It more represents uh, the yeast. Uh, Do you know what century we're talking about? The century. Oh, is this a quiz? Huh? Um, <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> I would say uh, uh, 17th century. Wow. Okay. You know. All right. Now, it also, uh, the food, all right, depended on, uh, the food we were eating, you know, when you were, you know, in Roman times, or yeah, sure. whatever, it depended on, I imagine, where we were, if you were near the coast, you were eating fish. If you were in the middle of the continent, you were eating deer. That's exactly right. And so many of the, the artificial selection stories that we can tell uh, have to do with what's available uh, locally at the time. Uh, for example, with the, with the pork story that we'll be telling on uh, the Wednesday, February 2nd program uh, is uh, part of the domestication uh, process by which uh, humans started uh, domesticating uh, uh, pigs from wild boars and it looks like it probably happened up to seven times independently throughout the world really Asia Europe uh, Central How long ago are we talking about we're talking about uh, anywhere between nine and thirteen thousand years ago wow. uh, so that uh, wild boar and pigs have been associated with human uh, agriculture we, and so um, so locally uh, people bent these food products to their to their uh, to their purposes yeah. it's called evolution get us caught up on uh, what you're doing here well uh, we decided to grill the pizza today just so they could see it. They can watch it. It's starting to puff, starting to bubble. I've grilled it on one side. I'm flipping it over. Now I've got a garlic potato mash mixture with a little bit of a, 
uh, aioli, which is uh, uh, oil and garlic emulsified, blended in. And I'm going to smear that over the top as my sauce. It's a traditional uh, tomato sauce. This is going to smear. Now, we talked a little bit about the bread being unleavened, the crispy uh, lavash cracker. It's when they started experimenting with yeast, which the Italians did, is when they got the, the fermentation, the growth, and the, uh, the breads we have today. Now, potatoes originally came from the Andes, and they, uh, they were uh, uh, developed there, originated there naturally. And uh, You've called potatoes the perfect food, by the way, right? Uh, well, uh, facetiously. So we, we <laughs> they perhaps aren't the perfect food, but they're a very nutrient-rich food uh, that can st sustain life really by themselves, almost. It's an important uh, seller. Um, they're yeah. responsible for eliminating famine. They've taken, uh, uh, you know, when you say it's a vehicle that would... You can mount uh, fats and cheese, and that's potentially when it gets to be or fried. But a potato in its natural state is magnificent. And you can check online with the Potato Council. They've got all the uh, specs on how much people are eating, what kinds they're eating, and, and how the potato in this nation is being uh, divided in, right. in, in the world. So. We're talking about uh, 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 food preparation, the evolution of it. Uh, David, you had an interesting story about stir fry, where it came from. I love that story. Because you think everything has had an, uh, an evolution. Now, stir fry, they're a small boat. They designed a cooking vessel called a wok. And in that wok, they could take very small, they only had small amounts of fire, coal. They'd get that hot, get, design that wok so there's an intense heat. Then they had to, you know, cut the vegetables, cut the meat, cut everything at something that they knew that was going to cook quickly. Up, up, cook, cook, talk, and then whoo, blow out the flame so they can conserve it for the next time. So that dish evolved out of a necessity to survive. Uh, Jason, you, you mentioned, uh, I think you said domesticated pigs, or pigs were domesticated in about seven different locations across the right, world a right. long, long time ago. So there are, uh, uh, are, are there some food preparations or even some foods today that, you know, somebody else might just be loving halfway across the world and would just make us sick here in the United States? <laughs> Certainly, there are certain foods that are associated with cultures that, that we find unpalatable, and I think vice versa as well. Um, and that goes back to your earlier comment about locality or the local uh, consumption of, of what they had and, and uh, 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 available to them. So, yeah, absolutely, there are certain cultural um, linked foods that, that potentially we may find. Wasn't there the movie about uh, eating the uh, live monkey brains or something? <laughs> Is there any truth to that? Well, oh, there, sure. there may be, but we don't do that at the State Museum. So. <laughs> That could, could be next year. year. Well, it won't be, no, no. That could be next year. <laughs> that could yeah, be. All right. Is that true, David? I mean, is it, does this go on somewhere? Say again, I'm sorry? The, uh, what was that, Indiana Jones? I think it was. Yeah, Where chilled monkey brains. Monkey brains. <laughs> okay. And they were creatively served it in the, uh, the right. vessel in which it's right in the skull. Yeah, 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 uh, original vessel. I have put uh, um, a we don't pork know. confit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so that I can catch up here. This is the uh, pork that we've cooked very slowly. Um, it's the shoulder. We've pulled that pulled pork. We've now put that on top of the potato mixture. I want to take a little bit of fried garlic that I have here. And it's been uh, slow fried and a little bit of olive oil. Garlic, garlic, garlic in the morning. Awesome. Uh, a little bit of uh, chilies to sprinkle on top. Now, this is not necessarily a dish we're going to do for our event. This is just something I like. Uh, I selected so we could uh, talk about all the elements of our evolution series. Now we have experienced, uh, you know, food evolution right here, if you will. I mean, in the capital region, and uh, because I, you know, Peter Rose wrote that wonderful book uh, about colonial Dutch cooking, right. and one of the things she referenced was in the. Um, uh, even in the 1500s and 1600s, they would feed children beer. Mm. I believe because the water was just so bad right. over there, and so they just the, the practice kind of continued here until they said, you know what, we've got to figure out how to feed them water instead of beer. <laughs> but was not was there not uh, even when uh, like British soldiers were based here in Albany and they were still. Um, supplied with a ration of whiskey. True, and remember where beer and whiskey come from. That's the, the fermented through the, the, the yeast uh, that we've been talking about, this Saccharomyces. And that again was a distrust of the water, right? Correct. Well, Correct. it's a preservation, you yeah. know, so they know that it's safe. It's been yeah. uh, uh, preserved. Yeah. All right, so pork, yeast, pork, yeast, and, and, potato. and potatoes. Our three uh, evenings, uh, the, the first three Wednesdays in February. Um, it's a, it's and a, you picked these because they go that far back? We chose these as, uh, as items of interest because they have broad-scale uh, 
um, appeal to, to most people who like to eat. So if people come to these demonstrations at the State Museum, uh, will they learn how to cook some dishes? Well, it's, it's a great program in that we're going to marry this idea of, of uh, science and science education and, and popular cooking. So they'll, they'll be exposed to some, some uh, evolutionary biology. They'll be exposed to some great recipes from, we have Chef David Britton, we have Chef uh, Stephen Topper, mm -hmm. and we have Chef Tony DeStratus from the Lake George Club. And when there's a story behind the food, and they say, oh, I can remember that, or you know, again, we're giving the uh, a potato a nice uh, support. So it has had some recent press that, uh, again, it's, it's bad for you. They're talking about school lunches, taking them out. And a gentleman with the Potato Council in Washington, D.C. said, that's, forget about that. And he went on a potato diet. And uh, I think within, uh, I'm guessing, 60 days, 90 days, he lost 30 pounds eating only the potato. Hmm. So again, it's the fat, it's the sour cream. There's a lot of potato preparations that don't require the additive of these uh, greasy, fatty preparations. By the way, people could have seen you on uh, uh, Food Network, but also uh, they might recognize you in Saratoga Springs, uh, a prior incarnation of Springwater Bistro. Springwater Bistro is our restaurant, and right now we have a very fun project called Pies on Wheels, and it's a traveling pizzeria, wood-fired oven on the back of a large truck. We do a lot of events, a lot of specialty stuff. We're at the Saratoga Racetrack. Uh, so we've embraced the pizza. That's sort of, I guess, another reason why it's here today. This evolution of food, of course, is ongoing. And as you said, so much of it is the mother of necessity and availability. Correct. Do you ever see, and, and David, this will probably make you cringe, I mean, do you ever see real foods being replaced by nutritious synthetic foods just because of necessity? Synthetic food. Give me an example, synthetic. All right, what like are we talking about? Pill. <laughs> uh, a pill. Uh, uh, we see it in the science fiction movie. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Food is oh, too good. Oh, we're talking like <laughs> soil and green? Is that what you're saying? Well, that was people. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, Sorry, uh, I just spoiled the end of the movie. <laughs> 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 no, no. I think you'll keep it fresh. Keep, yeah. you know, eat it in moderation. Um, this is the third year that we've done this. We've uh, had uh, chilies, which is a big history. We did uh, invertebrates, uh, non-vertebrates. We did... Uh, uh, what are some of the others? Uh, uh, well, the we did nine. chicken, we've done poultry. Chicken, but poultry. just look at the history of, for example, a potato. We have uh, you know, thousands of years of, of history with a potato in human agriculture. Now there are over 2,000 varieties uh, domesticated throughout the world in 148 different countries. Oh, this looks good. So uh, I don't think real food's going to go away anytime soon. I is there any new food, or do we just find new ways to prepare uh, the same old food? I think it's uh, probably more the latter. I think we, we uh, uh, are continually selecting artificially things that are, are palatable to, to humans and developing new strains, new, new varieties that way. All right, give everybody a rundown then. Uh, New York State Museum, it's, uh, going, it's the evolution of cooking. It's a cooking tree of life program. Tree it's, of life, yep. important tree of life. That's right. It's the uh, February 2nd, February 9th, and February uh, 16th, all Wednesday evenings in February. Uh, it's a fantastic program, free to the public. We can free go to your website public. and get details. We can go to the New York State Museum website and all get right. details. And uh, we encourage you to come down, bring your kids, and... Uh, We'll have a great time. There's with interaction. We'll they provide, come uh, we're going to provide, I just want to note, a, uh, a link on our website at WNYT.com. We'll uh, hook you up with the uh, New York State Museum website, which is a good one, and they have a lot of good information uh, on this Tree of Life uh, program, which should be a lot of fun uh, through February. Jason Cryan with the State Museum, David Britton, Food Network chef, and all over the place. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Good thank seeing you, you again, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And thank you for uh, very much for joining us here on Forum 13. I'm Phil Bailey, and we'll see you next week.